Hold tight. Hold on. Fishermen are a breed apart. It is very much a Marmite job. Oh, hail the hate! I do question my sanity sometimes. Every trip is a gamble. You just have to go with your gut instinct and your experience. Come up! Get it right, and the crew can come home with thousands. <laughs> Get it wrong, and they can catch nothing. My worst has been two pound fifty. I just want to be there to support him. As they battle against the odds and the elements, things can turn quite nasty very quickly. I mean, it's the most dangerous job in Britain. Is this? The worst injury I've seen: death. Now there's a demand for a new generation who are tough enough to endure the call to sea. I don't know anything about fish. They swim. No, we can definitely break people and definitely make people, yeah. I've never ever succeeded at anything, you know? I ain't backing down on it. You learn who you are quite quickly in this sort of job. As fishermen, you are the last of the hunters. The area forecasts for the next 24 hours. There are warnings of gales in Lundy, Fastnet, Irish Sea, Malin Bay. It's early morning, and despite severe weather warnings, Britain's 5,000-strong fishing fleet is hard at work. The Van Dyke is hunting for scallops in the channel. The sunrise has found cod off the Orkneys. And the Gavenic of Ladrum is steaming out from Newlyn, hoping to find valuable whitefish before the full force of the gale hits. Her skipper Phil has worked at sea for 30 years. Most of them are a bit touchy in the mornings. <laughs> Some more than others. Um, usually just because they're tired. Long, long days on deck, watches through the night, broken sleep. On most boats, the crew changes from trip to trip. Phil's team have been with him for years. What got me into it is the love of fishing in the first place. You know, I may have failed a few exams, <laughs> but I'm not going to fail as a fisherman. Nice being with the people that you're with like that, and it is, like you say, it's home from home. You've got to treat it like home from home, you know? Bricked off Simon said they wanted a song. Did they? Yeah. Both of them are fast asleep. <laughs> Not everyone is so keen to get up. Come on, then, little Bricky, I sing you a song. Hey, the sun has got his hat on. Hip, 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 right. <laughs> what do you need to fit in on the team of the Gavenna? You're asking the wrong person. <laughs> Strike three, you're out, boy. The last one to breakfast is 21-year-old Louis. It's his first experience of life at sea. If he impresses Phil and the crew, they'll offer him another trip. You having toast or something, son? Uh, yes, please, yeah. If he doesn't, he'll be back on the benefits. His last job 
was in an Essex kebab factory. The main appeal was the adventure and the, you know, the setting out to see. You don't know what you're going to catch, and you don't know what the weather's going to be like, but then you still go out and do it anyway. And it's like uh, a different world sort of thing, you know. Fucking hell, I thought Fucking hell. I'd rather be an astronaut or be a fisherman or be a builder or something, you know. <laughs> Before the crew gets to work, Skipper Phil has some advice for his new deckhand. You smoke, boy? Yeah. Another <laughs> Have you got a sense of humour? Yeah. It's from Essex. Of course he is. Right. What experience of boats do you have? None. None. Right. Um, this thing's a It will do its best to kill you. All right? Yeah. Listen to what the boys tell you, yeah. all right? Yeah. Um, you're kind of at a fucking disadvantage here now as well, because you're in at the deep end. Yeah. You're going to see in the middle of the trip, the gear's all short. OK. We're going to have a shit steam off. It's half a gale of fucking wind. OK. When you wake up, you're going to be feeling like death, and you're going to be straight in it. Just... I'll give it a... I'll give you a break just, in gently, like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All anybody can ask is do your best. Yeah. And don't give in. That's a very important Mental, thing. Right? It's, all in, yeah. it's all in your head. Yeah. I think he would love to feel that he's part of it all. If he actually felt accepted and brought into the clan and that he felt that they liked him, he would really be happy then. I'm going to do the best I can and if, you know, hopefully that should be enough, even, you know. If it's not, then I don't know what I'll do, really. <laughs> right, are we ready, boys? I need a rock and roll, all tied on properly. The boats reached her fishing ground, a hundred miles west of Land's yeah. End. The crew's first job is to haul the nets in. Okay, Bruno, just checking. They're hunting for hake, turbot, and monkfish. Oh, hail the hake! Get your hands out if your balance is a bit low. The old hands take new boy Louie under their wing. Yeah, spot on. When did you first want to be a fisherman? I never wanted to be a fisherman. <laughs> <coughs> I got asked one day in the pub. How old are you? Uh, 21. What the fuck are you doing this for? <laughs> Smell with you. To begin, he'll be limited to cleaning the fish and picking out the nets. What you don't, what you don't buy, yeah? What's happening there, Stan? What's going on here? Hey, skipper. Hey, you fucking bitch. The fish should fetch up to ten pounds a kilo once it reaches market. Start on the next one up, Sean. We'll do four for Turbo. You start. The crew are share fishermen, so they only get paid if the trip makes money. The first haul is in, but bad news is coming. Seven. Fucking hell. On the boat's sat phone, Phil keeps up to speed with the prices back at harbour. He finds out that foreign trawlers have been landing their catch in the south of England, flooding the markets. So fish prices are at rock bottom. I'm just trying to find out about sending a bit up to Plymouth. Fucking desperate. Monk was fucking five to seven quid. What? Ray, a quid. Really? I'll tell you what, this year is a fucking disaster. It's a proper fuck-up. My boys could be at sea working their ass off all week, thinking, oh, you know what I mean, we've been one of the only boats out. We should get good money for our fish this week. It should be worth it. What, what, what prices? Shit. Shit. Shit, shit. Bad as you can ever fucking get. And something like this has happened. 
none of their fault at all whatsoever, but they pay the price. With bad weather on the way, the boat is nowhere near covering its costs. Do you know what I would love to see turbot season? A string. You just pick it up, and from end to end, it's just continuous. You fucking need it to make them prices. <laughs> but despite the coming storm, Phil is reluctant to go back to port with a catch that won't make money. What is the plan now? Right. I don't know. <laughs> We've either got to go and shoot the trammels up the Labrador, but I'm very dubious as to whether there'll be anything there. Or we've got to go and catch some fucking ache. He's got a lot of pressure on his shoulders. He's got a boat to keep going. He's got to organise what he can catch, what he can't catch, where he wants to go. He's got to produce every week. So I don't know what to say, really. I've, I've never been so fucking skint in my life. Hard to know, isn't it? Other boats are returning to the safety of the coast. But Phil will be forced to take a risk, staying out in the storm. It's not something he takes lightly. If you know that that type of weather is coming, you really need to be thinking, I don't really want to be out in that. Running before very bad weather is, is very dangerous. She don't take no prisoners. That's one thing we do know. There are warnings of gales in Lundy, Fastnet, Irish Sea, Malin, Bailey, and Southeast Iceland. The general synopsis of 1800. It's the Gavenic of Ladrum's third day at sea, and a Force 10 gale is coming from the Atlantic Ocean. Fucking. Hey. Fucking. Phil has to move fast to his next fishing ground before the storm hits. Said they're giving down force ten. Right? Yep. That'll be fun. What? <laughs> Box flat. Give me some idea of what you're thinking when you know you're heading into rough weather. Oh, this is going to be fun. Down on the deck, New Hand Louie has no idea what's about to hit him. The crew, yeah, we're all like, uh, seem like they're in with each other. Like, and you feel like a bit of a outsider at first, you know? <laughs> and you're just new. You're a land boy or whatever. You know, you don't, you don't really know anything, you know? And, like, it's like they're all one family and you're, like, an outsider to them. <laughs> that kind of fucked you up, didn't it? Oh, fuck you. That was silly, wasn't it? <laughs> I ain't doing that again. <laughs> Go get yourself dried up. The crew are at sea for ten months in the oh. year. <laughs> they spend more time together than they do with their families. <laughs> but I think your humour, I'd say, is a little bit harsher to what most people might be used to. <laughs> but that sea rules don't apply. Like, a lot of rules don't apply when you get sick. You all right? Yeah. <laughs> Paint pads. <laughs> We've had quite a good little team for a while. 
feels like it sometimes. Other times, you just want to stab them all in the face and throw them over the side, but there you go. <laughs> we spend a lot of time together, I thought, do you know what I mean? And it's a good atmosphere aboard that boat. It's nice. Obviously, everyone has their moments. Don't get me wrong, they do, but it's a, it's a nice... It's a nice... It's going to work and feeling happy instead of getting up in the morning and thinking, oh, fucking, I don't want to be here. Oh. I have had enough of this fucking lot, I tell you. Fucked right off with it already. I'm fucking proper fucked right off with all of this already. Phil speaking to his wife. I ain't got no idea. The other Newlin boats are coming back to port to avoid the storm. But Phil has to stay at sea in the hope that when he lands, yeah. prices will be higher. I know that, look, we're catching less and prices are worse. So to make up the difference, we're not having any time off. I am had a day off since we went on holiday last fucking May. This fucking mortgage and all the insurances and all the rest of it is it's, it's fucking breaking point. You know what I mean? Are you right now? Yeah. Are you dry? Yeah. Come here, give me a hug. After another poor catch, Phil's patience is beginning to fray. Shocking, this lot is. He comes down to inspect the deck. What you want to do, straight away, is to get rid of that, get rid of this fucking lot, like that. You take the fish out, turn around and put it in the box. So you're not bending over and you're not trying to do it in the tray covered in all the fucking net. Yeah. Fucking simple. Take it out the tray and turn around. Easy. Fucking time, so I have to fucking say that. We haven't had a visit on deck like that for a while. Don't miss them. Come down, throw things around a bit, storm back up to the shed, and then fucking everything's away again. <laughs> Under pressure, Phil decides to take a gamble. He's heading further out to sea, towards the bad weather. He's heard about massive catches another hundred miles to the west, on the continental shelf in the Atlantic Ocean. 197 miles, Steve. Who is? Is. 197 miles. 11 degree line. Why the fuck are we going to the 11 degree line? So we're going to go 197 miles. See, on the fucking same planet as the rest of us, or what? What? What the fuck are you going to do for it? You got me ready to what? I think I fucking must be. You can never ever know for sure that you're on the right road, but. Sometimes you just get the feeling, right, this is what we need to do um, and stick to it. And sometimes it's not always popular with the crew, but some of our biggest catches have been right through horrendous weather, you know what I mean? I don't know what the fucking weather is going to be like when we get there, Mike, but... <laughs> <laughs> there I reckon be fucking swells down there like fucking mountains, but they are. We'll worry about that when we get there. I saw that exactly. North Fitzroy, so west to the 6 to gale 8, occasionally severe gale 9. Lundy, Farsnet, cyclonic 5 to 7, becoming southwest, thundery rain, then showers, occasionally fall. As the boat steams towards the storm, the crew sit down together for dinner. And Louis learns that there's more to life at sea than fishing. Does anyone want mash? Yeah, you want some mash? Here, Louis, son, let me, let me just say one thing to you. Put your knife and fork down. Yeah. Wait till he's finished dishing up, because on here we got manners. Oh, All right. sorry, yeah. So put your knife and fork down and wait till he's finished dishing up. I fucking hate that. You're lucky you don't get that wrapped over your fucking knuckles. Yeah. That's happened before. I was trying to get on well with the skip and make sure I'd done nothing wrong, because like, everything was leading to that moment to make sure he liked me, you know? That's the last thing I was thinking of, that he was going to 
you know, shout at me about food. Do you want gravy? Get your fucking dinner down this end of the table. For the fourth time, I'll chuck it over the fucking side in a minute. No one will steal it. It's all right. No, no, no. We're not in Essex now. No one will fucking rob it. You're all right. Everything else is pretty uncivilised. So when you have a meal, put on a clean shirt. Don't be sitting there with fish guts tripping off your arms and fag ash everywhere. Do you know what I mean? Just, hey, let's, let's have something a bit nice here for 10 minutes, eh? Huh? You hungry, boy? <laughs> you want a longer fork so you don't bite your fucking knuckles while you're eating there, or what? They all eat together as a family, you know? All eat together as one and work as one and whatever. At home, I normally just eat in my room or eat wherever. <laughs> it's Louis' first proper time away from home. He was homeschooled by his mum. You know, we've always had an unusual life. Louis grew up in the woods in their own land. He didn't have friends outside of that. It was its own little world. <laughs> he doesn't easily fit in with a big group of people because he's not really had much experience of it. That was absolutely beautiful, son, thank you. Once again, I've had far too much of it. <laughs> The next morning, the Gavenik is halfway to her destination. It's getting dangerous on board, and the storm hasn't even got going. Now, keep him away from the winch today. I don't want to see his fucking arm going through the fucking winch up there fucking bouncing around it. Where's he best today? Wash it. <laughs> no, I'll leave that one with you, Lord. Keep him away from the scuppers, because he'll be gone. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We're going to have such fun today. Yep. When we first had the strong winds and that, you feel the power of the sea and power of what it can do. and. Like, it's like a whole different experience. I thought there's no way I can get off the boat, there's no way. Like, you look outside and it's just waves and waves. And... We felt very lost and... Yeah. Most of the fleet has come back into port to avoid the coming storm. But Skipper Phil is heading out to the furthest fishing ground possible. The continental shelf, 200 miles west of land in the Atlantic Ocean. If it's going to be horrible out there, it'd be horrible because there's a lot of deeper water. So there'll be bigger swells. And you roll like fuck. <laughs> Sometimes you'll be looking out the window thinking, what the fuck am I doing here in this lot? But in another way, it's like, wow, this is amazing, like, you know? This will be where the fun starts, eh? Oh, yeah. Living the dream. Yeah. And my fucking dream. Before getting to work on deck, Louis has to wash up last night's dinner. Oh. It's all pretty scary, really. The only way I coped was to uh, to try and imagine that you're just on a, a seesaw or something, and just to know that the boat's going one way, so you've got to go the other way. This is 
is a fine day for duck jumping. It is. <laughs> I, I can see that little bit run up the deck. He'd be up on top of the mast going around. I told him, just hang on. <laughs> he went skating earlier, fucking Stevie grabbed him. <laughs> The first time new hands go through a proper gale of wind, oh, it's dreadful. It's like being inside of a washing machine. And you're still having to try and work as well. I don't know if he might be out of his league a little bit. Yeah, I, I think he is. <laughs> he come down the deck a minute ago with that look on his face as if, like, Fuck me, I didn't think it'd be like this. Yeah. <laughs> what do you reckon? Uh, Living the dream? Yeah. Fucking nutcase. <laughs> After 15 hours steaming, Phil has reached his fishing ground. And despite the bad weather, the crew have to start hauling. Shall there, Cap? Oh! Whoa! Whoa! Oh, your first trip in a trip, fishing trip. Now you're in the teeth of a fucking gale, eh? You're a lucky little fucker, aren't you? We've got tens later. <laughs> Look at that one rolling in. Fucking. Hey! hey. Whatever you have to do in heavy weather just makes it twice as hard. Everything becomes a struggle. Oh, 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 Obviously, this weather, you've got to concentrate a lot harder on keeping the boat on the gear, because any, any one good wave can knock the boat back away from the gear. Um, if that happens, the, the net can slip out from underneath the wheel on the winch. If it catches anybody's hand or anything like that, it will drag them out over the side. Certain weather and certain conditions, you can get what we call a bit twitchy. I think if you if you if you got frightened all the time, you wouldn't do it. You stay out there, then you're safe enough, up there, you know what I mean? Yeah, but don't you go in there? As a mum, you know you just got this this worry. I mean, it's the most dangerous job in Britain, isn't it? So I'm thinking, oh, I wished he had had, a, you know, proper education with um, qualifications and then he could be working in um, something, you know, and instead of having to go to sea. He's only 21. I mean, he still seems a baby to me. Every couple of hours in the night, I'd wake up and think, oh, let's just see where they are now. And they've gone a couple of more miles to different areas, you know, and um, there's gal warning, and I can track where it's going. And um, I, I think, am I better off knowing all this uh, or not? You know, I don't know. As the storm gathers pace, the crew are well aware of the dangers. Fucking hold on. You get focused. Stop, stop mucking about, stop acting the goat, turn the music off and cop on. Because you, and you have to change quick. Oh! Fuck! Keep going! Just keep on 
there, stay there. Fucking everywhere. Everywhere. Right. Things could turn around and be quite nasty very quickly. Something simple could happen and it could it could hurt people. Yeah, there is always a risk. Injury, going over the side, sinking, fire. Break my nose and bust my eye sockets, yeah, knock three teeth out, yeah, that hurt. Worst injury I've seen. Death. Yeah. Death, really. Um, drowning over the side, drowning. Come on. As the storm reaches its peak. The crew can't take any more chances with Louis' safety. It's better. Cheers. There's no land around for miles and miles. You know, like you're in the Atlantic Ocean or something, you know. Hold on! Quite a mental challenge, you know. Most of us have had some pretty bad experiences, one way or another. If you've been, if you've been doing it long enough, you will something bad will have happened, definitely. Um, I lost a chap over the side of the boat I was skippering a few years back. He got caught up, dragged out over the side. I went in and, and got him, but because of the swell and that, um, we couldn't get him back on board the boat. I, I wasn't strong enough to keep hold of him to uh, get him back aboard the boat. So he's still out there somewhere. The storm has now passed, and the crew of the Gavanic are getting ready for their last day of fishing on the continental shelf, 200 miles west of Britain. Shh. Phil's burnt 7,000 pounds worth of fuel to get here, and with the tank fast emptying, He's got 10 hours left before he has to return to Newlyn. Right, so, last day. Yeah. Shine. Shine. Shine bright. If they don't get a good day's fishing, he may not be able to cover the costs of the trip. Quite often, you can be there until the very last day of the trip, and you may only have 15 or 20 boxes on board the boat, and it's just that last day, and it does play on your nerves then, definitely. You're risking your life, you're risking everything to basically earn money, to pay the bills and do what you've got to do. And um, when nothing comes up, it can be absolutely heart-destroying. 
At 9 a.m., the crew haul up the first nets. Fuck it, Turbo! Come on, you filthy son of a bitch! Come on, baby! Turbo! Get him! Hook fish! Come on! Come on! Come on! More fish, more money. Make your money in France. Turbo! 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 The catch is better than expected. Fuck it, I'm slow to them! They've hit a big school of turbot, one of the most highly prized fishes in the ocean. Keep coming, baby, keep coming! And again, and again, and again! And again, and again! Come on, you bastards! <laughs> Suddenly life is OK again. Oh, 17. Oh, oh. 17. 17? Still all right, though. Hey. As soon as you hit a bunch of turbo and you know, and it's looking like a good tears, everyone's happy. You know, things you stop, things don't bother you. You're not getting wound up. Having a good, good bit of fish, bit of turbo is that's it. Oh, you've, you've done then. Phil's gamble to sail through the storm has paid off. And after nine days at sea, the ice room is filling up to the ceiling. Six. Five more than six. Fifty-six. As well as the turbot, the crew have caught monkfish, cod, and prime quality hake. Hold it there! Which could also command a top price if they hit the right market. How much the catch fetches will depend on how many other skippers have also decided to brave the bad weather. It's nice to know that you'd be going home and you might be able to buy those things and pay the bills. There's nothing worse than doing um, this job, working this hard and um, not getting anything for it. 57 plus 21 is 58, 67, 77. Hey, thanks for you. After surviving the storm, Louis has been promoted to gutting the monkfish. He's a big knife. Easier. You're fucking missing, dude. Use that or all the yellow, black, and all of them. Big, 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 big. His first ever trip at sea has been an education. See, yeah, that's how you got it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm trying to cut that, save the arsehole. Oh, yeah. But before the boat turns back, the crew have a new challenge for him. Oi, you're throwing the grapple next time, apparently. Throw it like you're about to throw a grenade, it's going to separate between you, life and death. Go on, Louis, you can do it, mate. I have faith in you, right? Yeah, yeah. go for it. Manly throw, big voice. Oh, oh. He's been told to throw the grappling hook the crew used to fetch the nets. An honour for someone so inexperienced. I've never, ever succeeded at anything, you know? First of all, when you come round here, when you come round here, you grab the grapple. Yep. I'll show you. Don't fuck this up, no, son. This is your big chance here. Yeah. No pressure. Bit of a morale boost from the skipper there, are you? <laughs> Can you grab the coils in your hand? Yeah. Or we'll put the rope like that. Yeah. I don't feel like, you know, proper fishing, because I don't know much. 
they're just like, they're all like really good at their job. You see that there, that was all neat coil there now. If you hold that. He's oh, fucking well, thick handed! No wonder he can't do it. Left handed! Thick handed, yeah, he's right. Uh, he's only got a break guy, isn't he? Right there, you can fight when you're ready. This way, see how to build the scene. Fuck me, you was lucky then, boy. What? Did I get it? You did, yeah. Did oh, fucking hell, that's close, mate. <laughs> <laughs> My leg's shaking. It's shaking. <laughs> You're like a quivering wreck. <laughs> stick at it, mate. Honestly, if you want to fucking crack on, stick at it. Because you've done a good effort, especially on this fucking thing as well. A lot of people don't, lot of people don't come here. Do they? No. What on this, this boat? A lot of people don't come on this boat. Why is that? Because it's We're just... all a bunch of <laughs> <laughs> But if you're out here, you might as well be fucking working and earning. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I've got no family down here, so I don't... You have got, you've got us down here now, yeah, mate. Yeah, you yeah. Be all right. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. you've got your few days off. Or you come out, I'll, I'll bet to you, me. You'll be all right. Mm. I've never really been that popular in a way like with friends outside of school because like normal kids would have you know they'll go to school they'll find loads of friends and then they'll probably have them friends all, all the way up to college or whatever and then go out with them on the weekend or whatever but I don't really have that. No, yeah, seriously. Hey, seriously, yeah, give, we'll give you your numbers mate, we'll, we'll, we'll be all right. We'll keep in contact. I can find friends like that now, you know, like probably the crew on the fishing boat, I don't, if they're all right then, you know. Hang out with them or whatever when they get back to land and stuff. No, I don't, I don't mind the money. Scrap. I didn't come for the money anyway. Louis' money will come directly from the crew's wages. While the Gavanic starts the long steam home, they must decide how much to give him. Redemption songs. Songs of freedom. Roy, um, old pal here. Do you want to pay him? Yeah. Yeah. Can we yeah, give him something? I thought he's done well. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah he? How much? He did right. How much do you want to pay him? I'd quite happily give him fifty quid. Yeah. Sure. You don't yeah, think that's yeah. a bit much for six of us? That's quite a bit. I personally, personally, I, I he's done I, eight I, nine days, hasn't he? Yeah. Right. I, I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm I happy think with he's. I think he's working all right. right on. Possibly yeah. a little prospect. I think that's it. After 10 days at sea, the boat comes back into mobile reception. Hello, babe. Can you hear me? Yeah, oh, I love the videos, babe. Absolutely love them. Right. You look gorgeous, babe. It's well nice. Definitely my most favourite moment is when I first go through that door. Oh, that is wonderful. Honestly, it's really good. Made my day, that did. It's like all hugs and it's like, oh, daddy's home. You know, it's, it's an amazing feeling. Bye, darling. Love you. Bye. What do I miss most about being on a boat? And a nice, hot, steaming bath at the end of a night. Yeah, that's what I miss. A cold beer, usually. <laughs> Over the past 10 days, Phil has caught 500 boxes of hake, whitefish, and turbot. One more to go with that, and that's that done. As skipper, he decides which market to send it to in order to fetch the most money. Phil's splitting the catch, selling half in Newlyn, and sending the rest to Plymouth where prices may have risen. But when do you know when a trip's paid off? When it's sold. 
of the amount of times we've come in or I've seen other boats come in with, with a lovely trip of fish and they're all in high spirits. Oh, we're going to make this and we're going to... And then the next day, no. That night, the catch is inspected at auction by fish wholesalers and buyers for the big supermarkets. 62 kilos, three, seven pounds, seven. Do the best you can to catch the best quality trip that you can. Land it on the best market that you think you, you can, and that's as much as you can do. Six ninety is seven, 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 ten. The fishermen sell it to them for less than half the price that's charged to the public. I'm your four, sir, 1.6 kilos. Hello, afternoon, sir. All right, yeah, Phil here from the Gavanek, down Newlin. Just wondering if you know how we got on today, please. The next day, Phil calls his fish agent. 12, 4, so... Uh, you don't have to have a lot of turbo to make to make a decent amount, do you know what I mean? But if you catch your prices right, obviously. If you're filling boxes, you go going ahead. The more you fill, the better you're doing. The catch from the trip sold for a total of £50,000, his biggest catch so far this season. That's because you've got quality there now, see? <laughs> All right, mate, OK, that's lovely. The Turbot got the top price of £10 a kilo. The Gavenic was one of only a handful of boats that had been out fishing. Cheers. Phil's offered Louie another Louis. trip. Yeah. Been a pleasure. Yeah, I'll see well you done, mate. Well anyway. done. But before going back to sea, he heads home to Essex. It's the longest time he's ever been apart from his mum. <laughs> 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 to succeed at sea, you know, being a, you know, that's quite a good thing to succeed on, you know. I don't have my Facebook because it ran out of battery and then they have the Wi-Fi. It was really good, though. It's definitely the best time of my life. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, yeah. But I'm going back, though, and, you know. Money, money. <laughs> Lovely. You can pay your phone bill now. Well, no. I don't, pay your no. phone. What is this? For, this is it's for you, yeah. And we can go out for a meal or something. Go over there if you want. If you oh, want to. Oh, thank you, darling. It's one o'clock in the morning. And the Gavenic is heading back out to sea. In search of the next pay packet. It's not a job, it, it's a way of life. And if you don't enjoy it, you won't be out doing it for long. That's for sure. You're out there living life to the fullest, you know. It's definitely the best thing I've ever done. You found a family. Found a family, yeah. <laughs> One big happy family. <laughs> Next time. Hello, Chris. I'll get you some money in uh, two weeks' time. Skipper Drew goes hunting for scallops. I'm sorry, I won't be here for your birthday. I need him, but I can't have him. He's got to go to sea. We're barely keeping our heads above water. I just hope to God we catch something. Let me go up, then let it go forward. Look, you learn anything this week. In a make-or-break trip for the boat and her captain. We've lost one side of the gear. Fuck now. Losing a set of gear is probably not the worst thing that could happen. This could well be the end of us. Back on board next Monday at 9. Next tonight, the humans behind the headlines. Incredible insight into the lorry jumpers breaking into Britain.